the effort has to be there. No matter how good you think you are, no matter uh, how bad you think you are, if you want to play at the collegiate level, the effort has to be there, right? So you have to email these schools. As much film as you can get, you got to send it out. Um, the importance of having a social media presence, especially Twitter. You know, my job right now with running the GP account, I'm, I'm talking with, um, you know, the nation's top college players, college coaches, pro players, pro coaches, and it's the exact same thing. We love seeing content, especially on Twitter, because that's the age that we've gotten to now. Everybody has one of these, right? Um, and that's how they find players. So the process, I would recommend anybody who's trying to get recruited, number one, it's emailing. And welcome back to the baseball playground it's your host jacob odell and we got matt mcgallan and we have a very special guest today his name is chase gerbrick he is a d1 infielder for lipscomb university in tennessee and man he's got a lot on his plate and we're going to jump into it. But just to read you off some background on this kid, he's a freaking stud. He won the state championship in 2019, and he batted with a freaking 426 batting average. And that's just putting on a clinic right there, brother. So I applaud you on that. That's freaking awesome. As a leadoff hitter. As a leadoff hitter. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. What a stud. Pretty what solid. a stud. <laughs> Pretty solid. So first and foremost, man, what, what do you think makes you so good? Yeah, number one, I, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, having me on um super cool obviously love what you guys do um so really really a big fan um honestly jacob i, I really appreciate the questions so, i mean um uh, for those who know me i'm i'm from you know whenever i started my career till now i've always been uh, very very tough on myself and sometimes that comes with you know its cons but it has its pros as well but i would just tell you um that you know i've i've have an obsession with the game and it's 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 a good one where I'm always hungry to get better. I'm always hungry to learn. And I think from a young age, um, you know, I was always reaching out to people, whether they were professional athletes, college athletes, and just picking their brain to say, hey, what makes you so good, right? right. Um, and now that, you know, I'm, I'm at this level, I'm, I'm able to, you know, pass that down to the younger generation. But I would tell you, Jacob, just, you know, the opportunity um, and, and the eagerness to always stay hungry and to always want more for yourself, right? Because I think in the age we're living in now, a lot of people just settle for good, right? They settle for good. They settle for average. Um, and, and some of that's not their fault, right? It's how they were raised. That was the expectation. But for me, my goal was to always be above average. How can I take the next step and go from here to here? How can I go from the player I am now to be um, the player I want to be, right? So for me, it was just you know, always staying hungry and staying humble and realizing that there were people who were outworking me. There were people who were better than me. So it was taking those steps to say, okay, how can I work, outwork this guy? How can I outwork that guy? And just knowing that there's so many people out there doing the work, what's going to be that key separator? So I think just the thing for me was having that obsession um, and always wanting to learn. I love it. My, my question is, you know, the accolades are there. That's, that's without question. Um, what do you do you think number one were you prepared coming from high school into college um and then number two um if so was it because of summer baseball was it the extra work you put in or was it the fact that you came from a solid program you played a lot of games you did the travel ball scene explain the the transition so far that you felt from from high school and, and going into college yeah, that's, that's a very good question. Um, you know, I, I would tell you, coming in is very humbling, right? So, you know, coming from high school, coming from a very competitive summer ball team, I thought I was ready, right? I thought I was ready. I thought, you know, hey, I'm going to come right in and, you know, I'm going to be able to compete for a job, right? And honestly, that's a very good expectation to have of yourself, right? But you get in and especially now with, with the COVID era we've experienced, you know, we're competing against... 18 year olds are competing essentially with guys who are 24, 25 years old. Um, and it's crazy. So I think I did all the right things. Right. But I think the adjustment was very humbling in the fall. I had a very solid fall, um, but not to the standard that I was used to performing at. Right. Cause in high school, you know, being the guy, um, you know, you're coming in, you're used to, 
you know, everybody saying, oh my gosh, look at this guy. Um, you're used to making plays. You're used to performing at the highest level possible. And you get in here, um, and the talents, I can tell you, you know, our team is very highly talented this year. We've got um, Caleb Ketchup, David Kovic, Parks Balk, Alec Gonzalez, and the middle infield who are, you know, fantastic players. And I've had a fabulous time uh, being around them and, and being able to learn from them. Um, but, yeah, you know, I would tell you, I did the right things. College ball is a very um, different level. It's a mature game. It's a learning curve, especially as a freshman. Um, but coming into the spring season, I'll tell you, after the fall, going to winter break, um, I knew what to expect coming back. So I knew what to work on. I did the right things. Um, and so far this spring, it's been a night and day transition between how I performed in fall, how I'm performing now. And, you know, I, I tell my parents this all the time. I, I feel like I'm back in my own skin now um, playing for, you know, Bo Jackson, which, which was my summer team. Um, because at the end of the day, it was a big transition, right? My parents, you know, they moved to a different state. Um, so I didn't have my hometown to go back to. My brother took on a full-time job. Um, and, you know, I'm coming here not knowing anybody, right, because this was eight hours away from my house. So whole new transition, living on my own. Didn't get to see my parents very much. Um, so the adjustment was certainly a tough one, but one that, you know, I, I cherish. So um, I would tell anybody who is looking to play at the next level, just keep working your tail off um, because you're going to get here and you're going to grow so much between – um, you know, all the guys you're playing with, they, they've all had, you know, different experiences, different learning curves, and they're able to help you. And like I touched on before, just the eagerness to always learn from guys who have done it at the JUCO level, guys who have done it at the Power 5 level who end up at your school, to just continue to learn and, and continue to get better. Absolutely. I, I tell my guys that I coach and, and that I'm around all the time, you know, go, go out of state, get out of your comfort zone. It's going to, you know, make you a man. It's going to change your perspective of things. Um, you're saying you're eight hours away from your house. It's, it's a transition. I went to a school out in Maryland, you know, completely other side of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thought it, it made me not only a better baseball player, it made me, you know, a, a better person, right? I learned how to do laundry. I learned how to do all these things, cook on my own and, and live on my own. Yeah. But it couldn't have been done without the, you know, the leaders of, of the baseball team. And I tell my guys, you know, you're going to go there and you're going to be on your own, but there's going to be guys that are going to put you under their wing. Um, what do you attribute right. to that, right? Like, I mean, I, I know you're probably dealing with it. Give me an example of, of you know, just guys that, that you look up to in your program that are taking you under your wing. So, Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that question. Um, and, and right before I even answer that, I want to um, just follow up on, on your statement. Something that I wish I would have experienced more in high school in my younger days was failure. Um because I got here, I was so used to performing at such a high level, being the guy, um, earning all these accolades, um, and then I get here, and you're not, you're, you're still a guy, but there's 40 other guys, right? So that was something that I wish I experienced. But you know, to to answer your question there, yeah, so many. I mean, you know, you get in here, and the thing about Lipscomb is, we have a very um, tight team, and a lot of these Power Five schools. We, we have a lot of Power 5 transfers who said they've, they've never seen anything like this before because at their school is every man for himself. Um, one of the guys, uh, I'm not going to name name him, but, you know, he was from, from a bigger school, um, and he said, you know, as a freshman, he would ask upperclassmen, you know, hey, what, what do I do here? What, what do I do in this spot? Um, and they would just be like, figure it out. And he was at a Power 5 school, and nobody took him under his wing. So the cool thing is I've had several leaders, Caleb Ketchup, um, shortstop here, transferred from Georgia. Uh, he was a um, defensive All-American last year. He's taken me under his wing a lot. Um, Alec Gonzalez, who, who came in from Tennessee, he spent a lot of time with me um, on his weekend days just working with me and working on some fundamentally sound traits that um, I could be doing better at. And I, and I had a lot of questions lined up for him on, hey, how can I do this better? How can I do that better? And him and I go back and forth a lot just tossing – ideas around and today at practice we, we spent some extra time after just bouncing some ideas but um, David Coppage transfer from um, Virginia taking me under his wing um, essentially all the guys you know I could go on and on I don't want to continue to name guys because um, I don't want to leave anybody out but that's such a cool thing about Lipscomb is you know you get here um, in a week or two and you already got guys taking you under your, their wing um, and, and guys who are welcoming you in with, with open arms. And as a freshman, that, that's really all you can ask for with how new of a situation it really is. That's freaking awesome, dude. Seriously. 
um, having guys around you, having that culture, that environment, that's exactly what everybody looks for. Now, with that said, how has it been for your coach, right? Your coach on his end, he's got all these things going on and he is creating a team identity. And now Matt and I have talked about this before is how are you, is your coach, how are you responding? How are things going with your guys' team identity? Yeah, it's a great question, Jacob. You know, I would tell you our team identity, and I haven't been a part of another collegiate program, nor do I plan on doing that. So, um, you know, I would tell you our team identity from what I've been around in the past is, you know, the best I've ever been around because it's, it's more than baseball, right? Coach Forehand, who's our head coach, preaches all the time about, you know, the importance of being a good father, being a good husband, being a good citizen, right? Um, there's more that goes on than just being a good athlete on the field. And he's somebody who I look up to tremendously. You know, he's he's a very passionate coach about the game, but, you know, he's he's also there for us. Um, in, in our life. And I, and I could say that I could go on and on about, you know, Adam Wise, Maddox Houghton, um, Matt Myers, who are our assistant coaches. They're, they're incredible. So our team identity is, you know, it's, it's more than baseball. It's about, you know, being a good human being. It's about leading on and off the field. It's about taking care of your responsibilities. And, you know, if you see trash on the ground, pick it up. Um, you know, we, we do field cleaning after every single practice and every single game, no matter if it's a high school team coming to our field, no matter if it's Vanderbilt coming to practice on our field, we take pride in how we clean up the field. So, you know, it's, it's the little things um, that go beyond baseball um, that Coach Forehand preaches all the time. And, you know, that, that's what I admire so much about this program is we have such a talented group of guys and the staff is tremendous at, at what they do. Um, but they also emphasize the importance of being a good citizen and leading and, and taking care of your responsibilities on and off the field. And I think that's something that's su super, super special here. That's awesome. Um, sounds like it's a great place to be. Um, excited for you, excited for the team this year, excited to, to follow you guys. With that being said, I got to know best advice you've gotten from a coach whether it's your high school coach, your college coach, best advice you've gotten from maybe a teammate, something that, you know, we got we got young players, freshmen, sophomores, juniors in high school that are, you know, looking to to go somewhere or, or you know, you know, be a guy at, at a at a college, whether it's JUCO or D one, D two, D three, NAI. What advice would you give those guys? I'm gonna go with, you know, trust the process. And I know that we hear that all the time, right? We hear it all the time. And I feel like it's something that is pretty generic. But when you really break it down, okay, a lot of people want the short-term overnight result. Oh, I want to gain 30 pounds of all muscle um, by tomorrow morning. Hey, I want to be throwing 95 off the mound by next week. In reality, that's, that's not how it works, right? And I would tell you, you know, you know, I, I, was, I obviously got recruited at a young age, but I had a lot of things to work on. When I was a freshman, I wasn't throwing the hardest. I wasn't the biggest guy. Um, you know, I wasn't hitting the ball the hardest. I was surely wasn't running the fastest. Um, but it's, you know, putting a plan together and investing in yourself, right? Because I think if you continue to do the right things, and I, somebody asked me this question the other day, it was, it was a kid on Instagram, shot me a message, said, Hey, Hey Chase, how, how do I stay motivated? And I gave him the simple answer. You don't, you don't stay motivated. There's a difference between motivation, um, and staying disciplined. And I, and I think that's so important. Um, you know, having, you know, your feet um, on the ground and just knowing what you have to do, um, because there's going to be days where you don't want to go hit. There's going to be days where you don't want to go lift. Um, but those are the days that you have to do it, uh, because that's going to that's going to be the separator between player X and player Y. So I'll tell anybody, you know, trust the process, invest in yourself. And just because player Y is ahead of you um, doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to catch them up because we see a lot of young players who are fully grown, uh, fully mature by the age of 12, right? Just because that isn't you doesn't mean that um, you're way be behind the eight ball. You're never going to have a shot, right? Invest in yourself, trust the process, always work to learn more and just outwork everyone. And if you do that, you're going to be in a really, really good spot. Just have an absolute grind mentality and go after it with all your effort, man. Absolutely. It's simple, really. That's, yeah, that's the way I think about it. Um, now, mo moving into something that I really am impressed with, you had 
30 plus D1 teams that were recruiting you, which is insane. And I want you to run me through that recruitment process. Maybe not each individual school, but what was the overall recruitment process for D1 schools looking at you? Yeah, absolutely. So I would tell you it started my freshman year in high school. So I was obviously a switch hitter. So from the from the get-go, that, that had a lot of interest. Um, and my dad – you know, hit me the grounders, my mom would videotape, and my brother, who, who was a first baseman at uh, Indiana Wesleyan, which is an NAIA school, um, he, he would catch my balls at first. Um, and we made a recruiting video, um, and we sent it, I sent it out to every school in the country that night. Uh, it took me about four hours, um, but for me, my goal since, I mean, since I was probably nine or ten was to play Division One college baseball. So that was my goal, um, something I was very passionate about. So sent it out to every school in the country, um, and I woke up in the morning with voicemails, texts, phone calls, emails, and the first email I got back was from Oregon State. It was actually after they won the national championship, so we ended up flying out there for a visit. Great, great place, great staff. Um, lo- love what they do over there, big fan. Um, and then that kind of carried over, um, and, and so it continued through my freshman year, um, sent all the content I had through videos, um, through, you know, updates. Sometimes I would even send, send the same email because a lot of these Power 5 schools would get hundreds on hundreds of emails every day, every week, and I wanted my name to stick. I wanted the, my name to stand out and for them to say, Chase Gerbic, we know that guy. He's, he's interested in our school, right? So um, that kind of carried over, developed a Twitter account, posted my content on there, followed the coaches, um, and then in the summer, we my summer team was playing a game in Nashville. We we're in a tournament, and our game got moved to um, Ken Dugan Field, which which is a field at Lipscomb, um, because the other field wasn't ready because of a, a, a rain out or something. And um, the staff happened to just be there watching, um, and didn't get to talk to them. Didn't even I didn't even see him there. And then I got a follow on Twitter, you know, about a month after, and um, then got to. Um, set up a phone call with them and ended up get, getting a, a, an offer from them. So that was really, really awesome. And um, just all, all the pieces just fell right right in the um, the, the right spot with, with Lipscomb in terms of how many people I knew here, how it all happened. I just knew it was God's plan for, for me to end up here. So I'm uh, very, very blessed I uh, made the choice that I did. I feel like so many people, so many kids, you know, want to, I, I agree, want to have that that gratification immediately, but also want to, you know, want to have those, you know, those coaches at the games, you know, and, and they want them to talk to them and, and do all these little things. And I tell my players and, and I tell everybody that, that asks me, you just need them to, to have their head up and, and watch you play, right? Like just trust the process. Like you said, I think a lot of coaches use that terminology, but if you really want it that bad, you can get it. And I feel like so many players, really eliminate themselves just based off their own, like you said, motivation or their own, you know, hey, I don't know if I can make it or not. And I think like that really eliminates a lot of guys from getting to that next level. Um, My next question, it it has to be one that, um, how many walk-ons does Litscom have? And describe what you've seen in the walk-on process, because I know a lot of kids that, that want to walk, they'll walk on anywhere. Explain the walk-on process at Litscomb mm-hmm. and, and what you've seen for those, those players that might be interested in walking on out of school. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I would tell you in terms of our situation, um, I am not actually a hundred percent sure. I don't, I don't know if we have any walk-ons at the moment. Um, but I do have a lot of buddies who have walked on a bigger school. Some are currently walk-ons. Um, and, and they absolutely love it. Um, you know, you, you see a lot of them because essentially it, it puts a chip on their shoulder to say, hey, I'm going to go outperform these guys. I'm going to go outwork these guys, and it puts more fuel to the fire. Obviously, right now, with the situation we're in, I would totally recommend um, Juco baseball. Um, a lot of guys have, have gone through that process who would have been a walk-on or who would have went to a D2 or D D3 out of high school. But they wanted that extra year or two to, to be able to grow and get as many reps in at a high level as they could just so they could see um, where they would be in a few years in terms of uh, maturity, maturity-wise, physically-wise, and overall talent. And 
everybody I've talked to at Lipscomb who's went the JUCO route, everybody who I've talked to who has uh, pursued JUCO, and everyone I've talked to who is still in the JUCO phase absolutely loves it, and, and they all recommend it. So, you know, I would say that that's obviously one where it's a family uh, discussion, one that's up to the player, the family. If it's a good fit and you're a player who firmly believes that you can outwork every single one of those players – um, and you can outperform them, um, you know, I, I would say go for it. You know, it's all about trusting yourself, investing in the process, and making the best choice uh, for, for, for yourself. What was the process, a breakdown of, because you, you sent out 100-plus emails to coaches, uh, breaking everything down, who you are, your stats, why they should even be looking at you. And I feel that a lot of high school players – are fearful of reaching out to coaches. And it's like, dude, that's your future right there. Yeah, fear and, of rejection. Yeah, fear of rejection. And it's it's just something that people yeah. need to throw out of their head and say, look, I'm going to email this coach. I'm going to call them. I'm going to contact them. I want to go play for this school. So what was your process on reaching out to these coaches via email, text messages, calls? What were those like? Yeah, Jacob, that, that's, that's another great question. Um, I would tell you a lot of the times, too, you know, I, I've had plenty of people reach out to me asking, you know, what you guys are asking about. How how did you end up here? What was your recruiting process like? And a lot of times I'll tell them everything they need, they need to do, and they still won't do it. And a lot of it is because they're lazy. They don't see, like we talked about, the immediate result of a coach getting back to them after one night. Um, there were plenty of schools who I emailed 15 plus times who didn't get back to me until the 21st email. Um, and there were plenty of schools who got back to me after the third email, right? So the whole process of um, getting my name out there, I would base on the word persistence, right? And, and persistence and patience. Um, because some schools love to recruit early. Other schools like to wait it out, see you in person, meet you in person, right? But the effort has to be there. No matter how good you think you are, no matter uh, how bad you think you are, if you want to play at the collegiate level, the effort has to be there, right? So you have to email these schools. As much film as you can get, you got to send it out. Um, the importance of having a social media presence, especially Twitter. You know, my job right now with running the GP account, I'm, I'm talking with, um, you know, the nation's top college players, college coaches, pro players, pro coaches, and it's the exact same thing. We love seeing content especially on Twitter, because that's the age that we've gotten to now. Everybody has one of these, right? Um, and that's how they find players. So the process, I would recommend anybody who's trying to get recruited, number one, it's emailing. And to start, you got to realize that these colleges get so many emails, you have to have an attractive subject line. Um, so find something about you as a player that makes you stand out. For me, it was a switch hitter. Um, if, you know, you have a really good GPA, throw that in there, right? So essentially, you want a hook um, to grab uh, these coaches in your subject line, followed by a few other pieces of um, information about yourself. Um, but also, you know, Tony Vitello, uh, awesome coach, great person, um, said it best. They get so many emails, you got to keep your email brief to the point, but informative, right? So position, summer team, um, throw a thing or two in there about the school, your video, and then how to reach you, right? Because if you're sending paragraphs on paragraphs, they don't, they don't have time to do that. They got 100 other players who are emailing them, right? So you got to keep a brief, informative, and send and post as much film as you can. And in terms of Twitter, same thing goes for the profile, right? Your biography, you want to be attractive, but there are so many guys who overflow their, their bio with um, you know, six foot, 185 pounds, right-handed pitcher, uh, X high school, X summer team, phone number, this email that it's no, just, just keep it short and simple, uncommitted, right-handed pitcher, uh, X high school, boom, that's all you got to do. And they'll, they'll know by the emails you're getting, you follow them. And, um, so that, that's kind of the key there. And, um, you know, all the college coaches that I've talked to have said it best, keep it brief, informative to the point and send and post as much video as you can. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because we, we talk about the same thing. You know, keep it brief. Make sure that you're posting the right stuff. I mean, on our website, we have an area where players can come in, um, you know, create a profile, 
you know, give that height, weight, um, add their, add their, um, Mm -hmm. videos and, and all that stuff to the profile. So they can send out one whole thing or they can, they can literally put that in their, in their email to every coach and the coach can click on it and have everything there. So that's something that kids should definitely look into players that are in GP, you know, or follow you guys. You should definitely have them take a look at it because it's just another avenue. It's free. It gives them an opportunity to, to, to get that out to coaches as well. Um, I think that you hit the nail on the head with social media being so big, especially with this generation, you know, they have to utilize it. Um, make sure that you're updating your stuff, make Mm -hmm. sure you're sending your, your, your profile stuff to everybody. And again, be annoying. I give this story to, I, I've told this story, I think a couple yep. of times, maybe Jacob, you've probably heard it maybe once or twice, but there was a kid that I, that played for me that I was like, this kid's a D one guy. I called the head coach 10 days in a row. Okay. 10 days. And I left him on that 10th day. I left him a message and I said, if you don't call me back, you're getting another phone call tomorrow. So I will keep calling you until you call me back. He calls me back the next day. He ends up coming yeah. out, seeing the kid. The kid's now at the school, D1 guy, probably going to be, you know, a Friday night starter um, eventually. I mean, the guy is, oh, you know, it, yeah, it, he's he's the real deal. So it's one of those things where, you know, some coaches, you know, don't don't advocate for their players like that. You have to do it yourself. Um, I think you brought up some great points. And, and, yeah, that's you hit it on the head. That was great. Bothering these coaches. That's what I tell people all the time. Somebody will say, I emailed Coach X on Wednesday. They didn't get back. Should I email them? The following week, like, should I wait a month? No, email them as soon as possible, right? As soon as you get new content or send that content again, right? Because the trick is to buy them. You want to get your name to stick. So I, that that's a really cool uh, story there. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's thanks kind for, of... Thanks for calling me annoying. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a good thing. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's for my guys. Yeah. It's for my guys. Yeah. I, you know what? They're my guys. I got to get that's them out right. the That's right. Time. Exactly. And there's not a lot of coaches that are doing that. Like we see a huge lack of effort that goes into it. And there's even just coaches that are maybe not even qualified to be in the position that they are in. And, you know, I see what you're doing with uh, Gerbrick performance and GP and it's just, it's awesome, man, because you're working with the younger generation, you're giving back. And if you haven't checked it out already, you know, our audience needs to go check out Gerbrick performance on literally every social media platform and go for, give it a follow. Cause it's, it's a great avenue, right. not only to get seen and like what we're doing here, but get seen, get connected, get advice and just like learn something there because you have so much that you can offer with being at a D1 school, with being in the environment, with being connected and networking with all of these other individuals at the pro level, at the high school level, at the college level. And it just trickles down where people can learn from you. And I think that you have so much to offer that people just aren't getting to yet. And it goes hand in hand with just everybody reaching out your self recruitment and what you can do to help yourself out and not just have it handed to you on a silver platter. It's great content. I mean, yeah. I researched it, you know, when we knew you're going to, we were, you were going to be on and, um, I, I think it's amazing stuff. Keep it up. I mean, I think it's really going to help a lot of players that, that need that, that extra, um, you know, drive or, or, you know, that extra help to get to that next level. So I think you're doing a great job and, uh, the players that people, players, people, and everyone that follows you very lucky to, to have that as a, as a resource. Yeah, I really appreciate that guys. And, you know, like, like you guys are doing, my goal is, um, to, yeah, obviously teach, teach the right things because you said it best, Jacob, there are a lot of unqualified coaches who, you know, don't teach the right things. Obviously it's very frustrating to see, um, so for me, it's obviously I, I want to teach the right things. Um, but two, I want to be a guy where kids can say, you know, I want to lead like him off the field, right? I want to do this like him off the field. Um, and, you know, just, you know, I, I knew how important it was for somebody uh, that I had growing up that I was able to look up to to be like, I want to be like that guy. Just, you know, how he, um, you know, talks to people, how he, you know, shakes somebody's hand and, and looks them in the eye, how he plays the game, right? So I, w- I want to be, you know, my main goal while establishing this is obviously I love the game. Obviously my dream is to be a Power 5 head coach when I'm older, but my main objective when establishing this site was to give, um, you know, s- players, um, you know, somebody to say, 
I, I want to be like you know chase the the chase off the field. So that's that's why I really love doing it. You're doing a great job. Yeah, beautiful man. Now I want to know what are some of the camps that you've been to. How are those experiences? Because for a lot of kids, they don't even get to go to camps or they can't afford to go to camps. So enlighten us on that experience of even just being at a camp. Yeah, so I would tell you the camp side, obviously, you know, you can talk to a a lot of college coaches. Um, Once your name is in the system, they'll send out those uh, generic invites. So the thing that I, I would be careful on with camps is make sure that, you know, you're in contact with the coach um, and and they know who you are before you go to the camp or else, you know, you're, you're wasting time and money. Not to say that going to a camp without being on their radar is, you know, not the right thing to do because there's plenty of players who've gone to camps, not on the radar, ended up getting signed, whatever. Um, But I would just make sure that you're on the radar before making a, a trip, you know, out West or wherever you plan on going. But I think camps and and showcases are are a great way to get noticed. Um, You know, when I was in seventh grade, my dad forced me to go to um, Evan Agona Baseball Showcase, which was the biggest showcase in Ohio at the time, just to get me acclimated to a very uncomfortable environment because he knew that once I hit high school, I was going to have to be doing the showcases in the camps. So he was like, let's get you out of your comfort zone where you're with older guys guys who are much more mature than you, guys who are much more physical than you, and just around the environment where you have 100 eyeballs watching you just to get you used to the process and how it works. So, you know, I think, and honestly, at the time, I was, you know, I wasn't frustrated about it, but I was very nervous. And looking back on it now, it was the best thing that, one of the best things that could have happened to me in my career because I met, you know, so many people there that uh, I still stay in touch with. I met, you know, so many coaches that I got used to the environment. I got used to being comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. I think that's so important. But um, going back to your question, just the importance of camps when you are on the radar, super critical because especially when you're a younger guy and they can't um, associate um, a phone call on their end with you. They can't associate themselves in person with you. It's a great way to get there, put a name to a face, talk with them and on their end it's a great way for them to be able to evaluate you in person so i think camps are are so important showcases are great too just i would advise you on the showcases again um, make sure you're going to the showcases and camps that you have interest in um, and make sure you're going to showcases and camps where you have some sort of communication with the coach or you know even if you don't you know you're at that level um, where they can, where you can, you can turn a head or two, right? So I'll tell you, if you're underdeveloped, um, and you're looking to play at a certain school, but you're not talking with them yet, I would say maybe back off, use that money for training to get a little better, get ready for the situation. And then, you know, when you think you're ready to go, um, I would attend that camper showcase, uh, one, 100%. Yeah. What's something that a player should do today? I would tell you emails, emails, emails. That that's the name of the game, and um, Twitter is great. I'd say emails and Twitter. But if we were going with with one thing, you have to email. Um, because there's, there's a common saying. I say this all the time. Uh, it's good if you're good, they'll find you. Um, that statement is you know complete eyewash because I've had you know several players, several teammates, several people I've known who could have gone the D1 route who ended up going the D3 or D2 route. And my brother played D2 ball, very competitive. D3 ball, extremely competitive. But the reason I'm saying, because these guys were draft guys, right? And we all know, you know, if you're playing at a mid-major school, D1 level, playing at D2 or D3 level, um, you know, it kind of hinders your chance to get drafted, right? So I think the big thing is, you know, if you want to get drafted or if you want to play at a high level, um, at any sort of level of college baseball, D3, D2, D1, you have to to email and um you know if you don't and you're not a max clark or a drew jones you're probably not going to get on the radar and pbr can only do so much perfect game can only do so much but you have to take it upon yourself to get found i think it's so important to email every single week like we just talked about being annoying in a good way i was annoying i was very annoying i wanted my name to stick and i wanted to essentially 
you know, not spam, but I wanted to spam these coaches so they knew who I was. They knew where I was from, what I was doing. They could keep tabs on me and um, just email, email, email. And when you get to a certain spot where you reach freshman in high school, start to establish that, that Twitter profile where you're able to start following these schools, these coaches, and, you know, you're, you're able to follow what they're doing as well. I think you did it. I think you did it the right way. Uh, shout out to your dad as well. I mean, extremely g- great way to look at the process. Um, I tell my younger guys, freshmen, JV, you know, players that don't have varsity experience yet. If you're going to go to those camps, take it for what it is. It's a learning experience. It's a learning process. It's yep. not. You're, you're not going to get signed. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. If you don't have varsity yeah. experience and you're a freshman or JV. You're not going to get signed. It's a it's a nice dream, okay. But what it's going to do is it might put you on a list. You know what? They might they might write your name down. But it's also putting you in front of a bunch of guys where you're uncomfortable and you don't know what you know how to how that experience works. And then now you get to that that level when you're a junior and senior and you're like, yeah, I've done this. I know how it feels. You know. And now I'm actually a guy who's gained a little weight, hit a ball. You know, in the gaps and and might be somebody that, that they might be looking for. So I think that's a great, great job. And, I mean, lucky for you to get that done at seventh grade. And, um, yeah, I, I think that's an amazing way to, to look at that process. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I agree with you, too. I think there's no better time to go into a showcase when, you know, you are underdeveloped just so – when you get to that point where you're ready to go, you're ready for that next level, and college coaches start to notice you, you have at least some experience on how the showcase process goes and how to handle um, those nerves. So I think um, that that was a great point right there too. Well, I got to ask the final yeah. three, right? We got it. We have a we have a question we ask everybody. It's the last three outs. All right, favorite food. Favorite food? Uh, I would go with blue crab uh, from uh, Delaware. I, I love it. Yeah, okay. I love it. Uh, my family, yeah, my family lived there for a little bit, so um, that that's the best. I gotta go. Yeah, with I was that in one. Maryland, man. I I know blue crab. I loved it. Oh man, that <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. good living right there. Uh, favorite movie? Oh yeah, that's right. Favorite movie? Uh, Captain America: The Winter Soldier. I uh, love, love Captain America. He's my, my brother's a big Iron Man guy, so we always get into the debate between who's better, Captain America or Iron Man. But I'm, I'm a big Captain America guy, so got to go with that one. Yeah, well, it's Thor, so if, uh, don't worry. I got it for you guys. Um, <laughs> favorite player? <laughs> favorite player? Either living, non-living. Baseball. Favorite, favorite baseball player of all time? Yeah. Uh, favorite baseball player of all time? Uh, I got to go with Alex Bregman. Um, love what he does. I know a lot of people don't like him with, with the cheating scandal, um, but I love what he does. I love his playing style. I was a big fan of him when he was a shortstop at LSU, so love how he goes about doing things, and um, he's, he's definitely my favorite player. He's a great guy, too. So, I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it, it, does, it, yeah. does suck. it does suck what happened, but he, he is a great guy. Yeah. So thank you, Chase, for Absolutely. being here. We truly appreciate it. The knowledge that you're, you're giving to your guys – uh, please follow Chase. Please follow his his page and everything he does. Hey everybody, make sure you go follow the Baseball pro- Playground. Uh, make sure you go like and subscribe as well. They do a great job over there. Fabulous content and a lot to learn from. So it's a must follow, and I advise you to go do that right now.